All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to solve for the integral x squared e to the minus x squared from zero to infinity using basically no calculus. So no algebra whatsoever, just some very clever thinking. And um, I mean, I'm sure this has been discovered before, but I just stumbled upon it when I did, when I taught multivariable calculus. Because start with the Gaussian integral i, which is the integral from minus infinity to infinity, e of minus x squared dx. And we'll take it as a given, again, there are like 12 other videos I made about this, that this is square root of pi. Okay, that's fine, but now notice the following. Here's a neat trick. Take i cubed. On the one hand, it's just square root of pi cubed, so pi to the 3 halves. But it's also i, 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 which becomes, if you want, the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e of minus x squared dx. But another way of writing this, it's the integral of e of minus y squared dy. And lastly, the integral of minus e to the z squared dz. OK, very good. And then what we get, that just becomes the integral, the triple integral, if you want, of minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity, minus infinity to infinity of e of minus x squared, e of minus y squared, e of minus z squared, dx, dy, dz which just ends up becoming the integral over R3 of e of minus x squared plus y squared plus z squared, dx, dy, dz. Well, and if you see x squared plus y squared plus z squared, just think spherical coordinates. So now, the question is, how can you represent R3 in terms of spherical coordinates? Well, not too bad. So x, y, z. Again, remember, there's a radius, or the radius, rho, that goes from 0 to, in this case, infinity. Then there's a horizontal angle, theta. Notice horizontal bar. So horizontal, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. And last but not least, there's the vertical angle, phi, that goes from 0 to pi. So in other words, this integral can just be written as the integral from 0 to infinity and 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi of e of minus rho squared and then just the Jacobian rho squared sine of phi d rho d theta d phi but you can just split that up to get the following. On the one hand, you have the integral from 0 to infinity, e of minus rho squared, rho squared d rho, times, there's no theta here, so it just becomes 2 pi. Last but not least, the integral from 0 to pi of sine of phi d phi. But here an antiderivative is minus cosine of phi from 0 to pi, so that becomes 2. And so what do we have in the end? Remember what that was equal to. That was equal to a square root of pi cubed. So pi to the 3 halves. But what is equal to pi to the 3 halves? This whole integral, which is 
Notice the integral that we want, except with rho instead of x. So integral from 0 into infinity e of minus x squared, x squared dx, times 2 pi times 2, so times 4 pi. So in other words, what we get, the integral from 0 to infinity of e of minus x squared, x squared dx, becomes nothing other than, again, that's pi times square root of pi. So it's just square root of pi, again, uh, pi square root of pi over 4 pi. So square root of pi over 4 pi. And indeed, even more is true because this is an even function. If you want the integral from minus infinity to infinity, you just multiply this by 2. Integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared e of minus x squared dx. That just becomes square root of pi over 2. Well, square root of pi over 4, if you want. But you can also do this somewhere. Yeah. Using standard calculus techniques, but I think that's very neat. It's more like, how can I apply this technique to get a cool integral more, more than the integral itself? All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.